In this tutorial, we're going to be making impact logos. You can stick them at the start of your videos or as idents or something. But yeah, impact logos. This is basically a port of a tutorial that I saw where the same effect was made in After Effects and I just decided to do it in Fusion instead. Okay, as usual, we're going to be working in Fusion, so we need our Fusion comp. Um, to find that, come to the effects library, make sure your effects library is turned on. Go to effects and Fusion comp is here. Or if you click on the star, you can put it down here in your favorites bar, which is where I have it. Bring it onto the timeline. I'm going to stay with the default five second comp and we're going to Fusion. Now, before I start, I'm just going to paste this here and just leave it out of the way for now. It'll become relevant later. So to make sure everything conforms to your timeline resolution, bring a background node in, connect it to your media out, and make your alpha zero. That just keeps your timeline resolution in fusion. So the first part, is the background and for that I used a concrete texture that I got off the internet to so bring in your texture and merge it onto your background. Now if you look at this texture it's slightly different size to our comp which is why I've got the background node in. Merge it on and now if we put this merge in the viewer you see that it's come down to 1920 by 1080 which is what we want. This is a bit light for what I want, so what I'm going to do is select the media in, click on brightness and contrast, select the brightness and contrast, and just drop the gain, like so. So that's our background. The next part of the system will be a particle system, but I'm actually going to do that last. What I'm going to do now is concentrate on the logo. So bring in your logo, whatever it might be. Again, just to sort of keep things working with our timeline resolution, I'm going to merge that onto a background because the logo itself is quite big. So I want to scale it down a bit. So merge it onto the background. View the merge and now we can use this merge just to scale the logo down. We're also going to drop this background to transparent. Now the other thing I had in my example is that this is distressed and doesn't look as shiny as this. To achieve that I've got a sort of grunge texture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge that onto the merge from the resize. I'm going to come into this merge three. I'm going to put it in the viewer. Now at the minute our texture fills the whole screen and we don't want that. We just want it on our logo. So with merge three selected, come over to the inspector and change the operator from over to in. Now it constrains it to our logo but it still doesn't look right. So again, back in your inspect, come to the apply mode and pick multiply. Now this does a good job of distressing our logo, but it also fills in the background alpha and we need that to be transparent. So to achieve that, come to settings and just deactivate the alpha process and we get our transparent background back. Now, I'm going to add a transform node after this merge three. And what that allows us to do is fine tune the size of our logo. So if at some point we need it bigger or smaller, we can use our transform. So now I'm going to press shift spacebar and type DVE. 
Now, what the DBE allows is a pseudo 3D um, effect, so you can actually bring your logo behind you to start off with. Put the DBE into our view, we've got our logo. And what we can do is using the Z move, we can bring the logo out and beyond the screen so that our animation will be the logo coming in, falling down and hitting the floor or the wall or whatever. So I'm going to take two and a half seconds to do that, which for me is going to be 75 frames. So I'm going to come to frame 75. I'm going to keyframe Z move, put it to where I want it, go back to frame zero, and then bring Z move down to zero, like so. And now you get the effect of your logo falling onto your floor. Now at the minute that's quite a linear movement and I don't want that. I want it to start off relatively slowly and then speed up towards the end. So to do that with the DBE node selected, come to the top of the screen and click on spline and this opens your spline window. Make sure your DVE node is selected and that it's visible here and just tick it. Come to this button where it says zoom to fit. So this is your path for the animation. If you drag and select both keyframes and then hit S on your keyboard. And what we want is for this to be slow and then build up quickly. So if we grab this top handle just bring it down and then grab this bottom handle and just pull it across a bit like so. So now the animation starts off slow, builds up and then snaps down to the ground at the end like so. Okay, so again Take the output of your DVE, drag it onto the merge that's already in your flow, and then you can view both together. What we can do if we just pop back to the edit tab, let our effect cache, and then you can view it in real time, like so. Okay, the next thing we want, as our logo hits the wall or the floor, it's gonna send up dust. So that's where the particles come in. So grab all this lot, oops, and the merge node, and then we can just move it along out the way. And now we can start to build our particle system. So for a particle system, you can come to your hotbar here. You've got P emitter. Any particle system needs a render, which is there, P render. Join them together and merge that onto our flow. Now if we put the P render in our viewer, you can see you've got, this is where the particles are coming from and you've got a few particles in there, but we're gonna up the number of particles considerably. So we want the particles to start at frame 75, just as it hits floor. So at frame 75, select P emitter, keyframe number, go back one frame and drop that number to zero. Come back to frame 75. I think I had somewhere in the region of about two and a half thousand articles. I'm then going to come forward half a second, which will take me up to frame 90. I'm going to keyframe the number again, go forward to frame 91 and drop it to zero. So for this period, the emitter is going to be putting out two and a half thousand particles each frame. Now we want these particles to move. So come back to the inspector and open the velocity tab. I used 0.1 and then you want them to spread out 
So come to angle variance and put that to 360 so that they're coming out in all directions. So now as our logo hits the floor, the particles spread out. At the minute, the region that our particles are coming from is quite small. It needs to be the same size, roughly, as our logo. And we'll bring it out so it's just about the size of our logo. So now we have the dust starting to appear. Now at the minute it's not massively clear. So what we can do is we can change our particles. So again, come into your emitter, come to style and change the style from point to blob. Now that's made them smaller to start off with, but what we can do with blob is we can actually increase the size of the blob and make them much more noticeable, like so. So now we hit the floor and our particles start to come out. At the minute they're coming out fairly uniform and we don't want that. We want them to swirl around a bit. So with your emitter selected, shift and spacebar again, and type P turb. And you see P turbulence and we'll drop that in. Select your P turbulence and where you've got strength, play around until you get the look that you want. And also play with the density. And now what we're going to do is after the P render is we're going to add a blur node which you can find on your hotbar here. And we're going to increase that blur like so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down on the life. So we want our particles maybe to go to about there and then start to die out. So again, if we come up to our P emitter, come to controls and where you've got lifespan, just knock that back. So that now as the dust sort of comes out to about here, it will start to fade away. Like so. Again, a quick check on the edit tab. And we're nearly there. The last thing I'm gonna to do to sell it is once you've got everything in place, select your last merge node, shift space bar and type camera shake. And what I'm going to do is come to frame 75 and I'm going to keyframe overall strength. I'm going to go back 74 and drop overall strength to zero. So there's no shake up until that point. As you hit, you'll get your shake. And again, I'm going to keep that going for about half a second. Keyframe it, come forward one frame and drop it. What you notice with the shake is that you end up with transparent areas on the edge of your screen. To overcome that, come to where it says edges and change it to mirror. And that's pretty much it. You now come back to your edit tab. You get that. The final thing to sell it is a sound effect. Um, what I did was I used 
this audio. So what you want is the beat of your audio to happen at the point that you hit the floor. So just line them up like so. And there you have your impact logo. Now, if you remember right at the start, I brought this little fella in here. Now this little fella is some 3D text that I made earlier. And just as you can use a logo, you can use pretty much anything. What we can do is we can disconnect our logo and just move it out of the way. If we bring our 3D text in and connect it to our DVE, it will react and respond in the same way. So your text will come in. and it will land now with the logo it was a circle so the emitter region was a circle and it worked well the circle doesn't work with any odd shape so the way you'd get around that if you select your P emitter go to the region tab and change sphere to bitmap. What that does is it adds an extra input on your emitter. All you do is you take an output from whatever your odd shape is and just pop it onto that input. Now our particles will come from the area of our text or shape or whatever. So you can see our particles now this kind of shape rather than a circle. Again, that just helps sort of sell it a bit better. And now you end up with that. So yeah, um, impact logos, and that's how you would do it. Uh, hope you found that informative and helpful please feel free to like subscribe and hit the notification bell and i will catch you on the next one cheers